hey welcome to the next channel so if you guys are into system software development uh, whether it is uh, user space or uh, linux uh, kernel space uh, uh, development you must have often seen an api called io control or io ctl api so this api is uh, quite interesting because unlike other system calls which have a predefined role if you are designing a kernel space module or a kernel driver linux kernel driver you need an interface to uh, configure uh, the features of your uh, uh, linux kernel module or your linux kernel driver so in this case uh, you can use io control api so this is the reason often if you see uh, if you are dealing with any network interfaces and stuff like that you may use uh, you may see often uh, people using io control uh, uh, api uh, so that they can get a mac address so they can set any uh, other parameters of uh, individual ethernet uh, ports so one such example i have discussed uh, recently uh, in one of my uh, video series uh, which is net tools uh, uh, stack uh, net tools uh, inside the net tools you have uh, uh, a command like uh, if config command implemented within the net tools uh, uh, stack and apart from that you have also arc command and stuff like that so i have discussed the architecture and i have done also a source code uh, walk in the same so while i'm discussing the source code i have also discussed about the usage of io control api within the source of if config command so if you go to the source of if config command so you can uh, see here at various instances uh, they are using uh, io control api so i don't uh, want to uh, give in the first episode i don't want to discuss any sample code of uh, io control and then uh, uh, discuss uh, about how it has been put in kernel space and user space as such so the most important thing is you need to understand the real world uh, use cases like this so that you can understand uh, the seriousness and also the beauty of uh, io control uh, api so although having said that uh, personally i am not a huge fan of uh, io control and uh, I'm, i i would rather use a uh, uh, proc file system in the place of io control uh, the reason is uh, io control offers a sort of interface as you can see here it's a sort of interface meant for uh, system programmers who are very much hardcore into system software development they may appreciate uh, uh, io control uh, interface uh, io octal uh, api interface the reason is uh, it gives a sort of uh, directly uh, library kind of you know view so that you can write custom libraries you can uh, uh, control your uh, effectively you can control your uh, you know kernel modules with the same whereas uh, if you see there is another point of view i would rather use a, a proc file system because uh, uh, you know proc file systems offers you a better uh, control uh, so that you can debug uh, if anything goes wrong you can also set permissions of these uh, proc files so that uh, you can also control uh, any uh, you know security related stuff with you know proc file uh, interface so this is the reason i have shot once a complete uh, uh, video series on you know proc file uh, interface so the proc interface so i shot uh, multiple uh, videos uh, series on the same and then i have also uh, did the various uh, uh, sample uh, code with that uh, you can uh, create a proc file uh, 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 interface you can also uh, do a read operation write operation you can create uh, a directory and uh, you can organize within the directory and stuff like that. so i have done in multiple series so that uh, if you have, haven't watched uh, and if you are really a beginner into systems software uh, uh, development especially in uh, linux user space side or else kernel space side i highly recommend you to watch the proc interface because this is very easy to understand unlike something like io control uh, interface so the thing i don't like about io control is, is also that uh, it is not uh, uh, platform independent with uh, proc file system uh, the advantage of uh, proc file system is uh, it is platform independent in case if your code is written in uh, c++ or else let's forget about c c++ in case if you have written uh, any java code you can still directly control your kernel modules with your java files or, i mean java code or else a php code and stuff like that perl php whichever programming language it is fine if you provide an interface through proc so this is the reason 
personally if you ask me uh, my uh, projects so whether it is uh, something i uh, do it for my own or else uh, uh, for my uh, customers or clients i don't uh, use io control uh, uh, interface uh, for that purpose because proc gives a better uh, visibility it is easy to debug and also it is platform independent any innocent uh, even a bash script can directly communicate with the kernel space you know with uh, you know proc file system so having said that uh, if you see the architecture of uh, io control okay the api you can see here uh, as an example it is within the if config command as i said before i don't want to take uh, in the first episode i don't want to take any uh, useless example and then discuss about the same and waste our time because it is important to understand take a real example and then we discuss something what is done in the real world so this is what all my videos this is what always i insist in the real world how it has been used so that understand this first and then you can take a sample code and then you can understand fully about it so if you see here it is very simple the api contains uh, three components one is uh, file descriptor and then it takes a command and then uh, like a code and then it has this uh, data structure so this is the overall architecture of io control uh, api uh, parameters uh, are all about so this is what it is so that way if you see uh, you can see here in the io control uh, API which they are using an if config command you can see here it is taking the file uh, descriptor file descriptor socket file descriptor skft and then uh, they are uh, uh, doing some operation in this case uh, as you can see here it is uh, a part of the API uh, set flag in that case so they are setting some sort of a control flag so as a part of that you can see here uh, the command they are passing is uh, set uh, i mean system io control they uh, stand uh, stands here like system or something like that this is something if you write your custom uh, kernel uh, device driver or kernel module you can have your own custom name so this is why you don't need to break your head exactly you don't need to memorize anything as such you can do in your own way you can pass your own data structure and stuff like that so in this case you can see here it's an existing uh, implemented uh, uh, interface you can see here system io control and then g stands for get in this case and then if uh, uh, interface flag so that's what it is so that's what they are doing it it's a specific operation they are doing it and with that they are passing a data structure so before uh, passing the data structure like they are passing this pointer of ifr uh, struct if request or if rec so before passing the same uh, they are populating uh, everything what is required and then they are passing the same in another case if you see here they are populating uh, these flags and then they are passing this you know uh, uh, instance of that uh, pointer so this is what essentially happens so you have a data, uh, api which contains uh, uh, three parameters which takes importantly a data structure which with it is what exactly you pass an information uh, to the kernel uh, exactly what you are intended and then you are also passing this command so that it tells what to be done with that data structure which is passed so this is what in the case of interface related stuff often you need an uh, uh, data structure telling uh, what interface it has to pick and stuff like that so it is quite easy to understand you can see here uh, you are passing the interface name uh, you are doing ifr dot ifr name and you are passing this interface name it can be zero uh, local host uh, or local loopback like lo and stuff like that you can pass the interface name and then uh, once the data structure is populated it is getting passed into the uh, iox control uh, api so this is what essentially is happening so if you hop on to my uh, uh, other case like net tools uh, i have also discussed about the big picture in case if you haven't uh, uh, watched the same you can uh, go uh, and watch the same so that you get that big picture how you can understand existing source code how you can uh, uh, study existing uh, implementation and stuff like that this, this is very important for a beginner because uh, more than you do new code you should understand how uh, real things are being implemented how re a real project is being done and stuff like that so this is also going to help you to understand if you are implementing your own uh, custom io control you don't need to do something like a google of course you can do google and you can find some various examples my intent is not about taking a simple example and then understanding how you can just borrow and then use it in your context the most important thing is 
use your common sense you know try to understand whether you want to choose if you design your code try to understand whether you need to use make a decision whether you need to use io control or proc file system and 90% of the cases you don't need io control but on the other side if you are accessing any existing modules like i have showed here if you are accessing any existing modules something like that in that situation you need to understand also how to use a platform like io control uh, interface because this is like a platform with which you can communicate uh, from kernel space to the user space so if you a little bit uh, scroll down in the source uh, uh, you can see various examples you can see here uh, like in this case uh, uh, they are setting uh, like something like uh, io address or something like that uh, it can be any such case if you see here since it is all about uh, setting some parameter you can see here the code they are passing is uh, uh, system io control s interface map and then uh, in that they are passing this uh, data structure once it has been populated with some values so this is what it is whereas in this case if you see the command passed is get interface map so like that you can use this uh, interface and then you can get a mac address of an interface you can uh, do various other things you can also set a custom uh, a mac address on an interface which is not uh, hard coded in its uh, you know nick card firmware so this way it is so these are the various cases it has been used like in this case say for example i'm sorry to interrupt in this case you can see here uh, to set the mtu they are using uh, once again io control uh, interface and then uh, they are doing the same so that these changes are been uh, set in the kernel space so this is one way to use and understand the io control but if you architect your own uh, uh kernel modules if you architect your own uh, kernel uh, device drivers you should understand do you need to go something so complicated like this or you need to use something as simple as you know something like a, you know proc interface so that is what it is so essentially if you see an example of a proc interface uh, we can uh, go to proc sys net ipv4 so if you see there are various uh, uh, files uh, exposed over here uh, so if you are into linux uh, uh, systems uh, or uh, uh, network admin and stuff you must have often used the file called ip underscore forward so with this uh, uh, file if you set its value as one uh, it will enable any uh, uh, linux system to uh, function like a linux router so it will enable the ip underscore forward uh, uh, ipv4 module uh, within the kernel so so it will enable uh, any network appliance or any linux based network appliance to function as a linux based uh, networking router having said that uh, assume you have populated all its uh, ports and other uh, information and uh, you know routing logic appropriately so if you are done with all those things so the final step is uh, if you set uh, the value as one what happens is uh, it uh, enables your uh, linux uh, based uh, routing platform uh, to work as a router and it will start forwarding those packets so this is one such example of proc file system i have also discussed various other examples in my other video series as well so having said that you may wonder why i need to discuss so much about a proc file system the reason is if you are architecting your own uh, you know kernel modules you need to take a decision whether to choose a traditional platform like io control or whether you can use the other platforms like you know proc file system as you can understand this is something with a simple cat command as a sudo you know you can just sudo su so you never need any user space uh, uh, c program or something like that in case like uh, io control you can understand you need something like user space uh, c code whereas in this case you can just uh, set it via shell command echo one dot slash ip underscore forward uh, echo i'm sorry echo one so cat ip underscore forward you can see here it has set so as simple as this and Un unlike something a situation like io control you can pass any complex uh, data structures the only disadvantage is you need to pass those data structures in the kernel space if you use something like a proc file system versus in uh, uh, 
IO control uh, command because it does this uh, copy from uh, uh, copy from uh, user copy from kernel like that you know operations and then it pulls the data structure the whatever the data structure you are passing in the kernel side of IO control so that's about it so in my upcoming uh, video episodes so what i'm going to do is i'm going to discuss about a few examples so a custom a uh, few examples of uh, io control api and uh, also i'm going to discuss about how it has been implemented in the kernel itself and we can also discuss uh, various examples like we can go uh, the kernel side of this and we can see how it has been implemented as a part of existing uh, kernel modules and existing uh, kernel uh, device drivers um, how they have been using uh, io control as its uh, platform uh, to get and set any parameters of those you know device drivers and the uh, kernel module so that's all folks uh, for this episode hope you guys loved watching this video so if you guys have any questions uh, send me an email so thank you once again for watching this video stay tuned have a nice day bye bye